Hi, today I wanted to do a video about using the uh, NAS for uh, with 10 gig Ethernet uh, so that you can do video editing, especially with something as high as say 4K. Um, so we do have other NAS that have say Thunderbolt connectivity, different options. Uh, this is if uh, anybody wants to use um, 10 gig connections to do the same. Um, so here I've got a, a NAS which is our TVSH1288X. Um, I do have this NAS um, on QTS, uh, mainly because QTS is more suited to this type of role than QUTS Hero. Um, I've got this completely stock, this NAS. It's uh, on the standard 16 gig of RAM. Um, it's had no changes. The, the Ethernet ports are just the ones that come with it. Um, so this is just a, a completely stock. If I show you the, the network setup on this unit, um, I do have two network ports connected currently. I've got adapter one, which is a 2.5 gig. I'm not going to use that for this test. It's just in there because it supports Wacom LAN and I can wake it up because it's in my garage. Um, but uh, we've got that one up here at the top. But if I scroll down, we've got another one, adapter six, which is the 10 gig port. Um, that's on a nice, easy to remember IP address of 10, 10, 10, 10. That's the one I'm going to be using for all the tests. And you can see it's connected at 10 gig a second. Uh, it's the one I'm managing the NAS through here in the top address bar. But this is the adapter. I'm going to use. Um, if you have multiple machines you can use both 10 gig ports. The bottom two, five and six there, they're both 10 gig ports. Um, there are also three PCI Express slots on this NAS. We've only used one um, by default so you can put more 10 gig ports in if you would like as well. Um, but that's how I'm going to do the setup. And to illustrate how I've got the uh, the drive set up on this NAS, um, I'll go to the uh, the disk section. So we can see here I've got two M.2 SSDs. Uh, these are one terabyte WD ones. These are used as an SSD cache, which I'll show you more about in a moment. Um, and I've also got um, eight 10 terabyte Toshiba drives um, inserted into this NAS as well. I've got it set up nice and simple. So single storage pool with a single volume. Uh, you can see that the volume has got the lightning bolt next to it. That means I'm using the cache acceleration on this volume. Um, if I manage the storage pool, we can see that I've got it set up um, as a RAID 5. So here I've got a RAID 5 with the drives. I'm not using any so RAID 0 or anything like that. I'm using a proper redundant RAID mode. RAID 5 is probably the most popular RAID mode that, that people go for out there. So I've got RAID 5 enabled on this. Um, I'll give you some more information here on the SSD cache. So this is where we would say is a uh, an optimal cache. So we've got a read-write cache enabled. Um, and we've got it set for a random I.O. of 16 megabytes. So when you create the cache, it will ask you some questions about which volumes you want to accelerate, things like that. So here, um, I've only got the one volume, so I'm accelerating that one, which is the data vol one. If I go to the next setting, it's asking how you want to customize the SSD cache. Um, so you can accelerate all I.O., but what we would generally recommend would be setting it to random I.O. with a bypass block size of 16 megs. So there's a drop down there to pick some different sizes. You can fine tune it up and down with that. Uh, but we find 16 megs usually one of the most advantageous uh, for the video editing workloads. Uh, so you've got 16 megs set there. So that's how I'm going to leave this cache for this test. Um, so that's the base setup of the NAS. I've done really nothing else. I've only got one network share on this NAS, which is just the default public share. Um, so this is where I'm going to be doing all the tests to into this public share. Um, so because I'm running a Mac, we'll do that one first. So here's a piece of software that you can test with. So I'm going to do a test with that one. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the, uh, the resource monitor here so we can see what's happening with the network. Uh, so the, uh, the information we want is off the uh, adapter 6, which is at the bottom right. So this is where we're, we're going to be looking at. We can see some peaks from some testing I was doing earlier on. Um, but you can see here, this is the 10, 10, 10, 10 adapter. This is the one where we're going to see things. So I'll make sure that when I'm running tests, um, that I have the uh, the test running out of the way of what's happening down here so we can see it. So I've pretty much got the, uh, the default settings here for AJA. Um, all I've done is change the target disk to be... Um, on the NAS instead of testing my local storage. So if I click start, uh, we're able to see we're getting up there close to about a thousand megabytes a second, which is about the limit there of 10 gig. And so we're able to max it out. Um, so that's a, um, a test done um, on a Mac. So we can see the peaks starting to appear in the graph down at the bottom. Um, but I do also have um, a Windows machine. So because I'm on a Mac, I'm having to virtualize that one. So here's a a virtual Windows machine. So this is running on a, a HP server. It's nothing to do with being in the NAS. It's not running in the NAS itself. It's just a HP server. It's another machine I had that um, that had a 10 gig connection on it. Um, so here, this one's also going to the public queue. So just to illustrate where that is, if I come to this PC, 
we can see the Q drive is the public share on the 10, 10, 10, 10 server that I've got here. Uh, so here is uh, the test running on this one as well. So it's able to run and get some nice quick performance. So 1000 megabytes a second. Um, now, even the least inefficient codecs that you may use would use about 600 megabytes a second. Quite a few will use less than that for doing 4K video editing. Uh, so you're very comfortably um, able to do video editing um, between uh, a few machines here running on the uh, running on the NAS. Uh, so we can see there we've got some nice spikes appearing, um, showing that the transfers are happening through there. Um, but this is primarily how you would configure um, a NAS to work for video editing with 10 gigs, so a nice lump of, of storage space from the hard drives, um, accelerated with a small amount of SSD, optimally set with that 16 meg bypass block size. Um, but this is really how you do do the setup um, um, for, for the NAS. So it's a, a really nice setup. It's going to work really well. Um, the NAS does have the two 10 gig ports, so if you have um, no more than two people you could wire them directly in there there's no need for a switch to get involved you can do a direct connection straight into um, uh, the ports direct on the back of the NAS or add more um, if you need to add more um, you can always go with a 10 gig switch we do a range of 10 gig switches that you can work with as well uh, managed and unmanaged options so that you'll be able to to find something that's uh, suitable for what you need um, I will illustrate that uh, for doing this uh, this 10 gig test uh, on my Mac um, so my MacBook Pro here obviously has no Ethernet ports built in as standard. Um, I'm using the uh, the adapter we make, which is a Thunderbolt 3 to 10 base T or a 10 gig adapter, um, which is the QNA-T310G1T. Uh, we do one with an S at the end instead that's a different type of 10 gig, but the one I'm using for this particular NAS is the, the one that ends in a T, which is the uh, the copper type of 10 gig, so it looks like an RJ45 connector. Um, plug straight in, and that's that's what I'm using for this test here. Um, so again, yeah, this is the, the TVSH1288X, um, optimally set up to work with um, video editing, uh, workflows, um, we're not cheating here, there's not an all SSD setup or anything like that, I don't have a volume created on SSDs, real world test here, straight from um, a Windows machine, straight from a Mac, uh, straight into the same NAS, and you're able to get uh, those results there. So nice and fast, going to be very capable for doing multiple users doing 4K video editing all at the same time. Um, if anybody has any questions or wants to see something else on this setup, please do let us know in the comments section down below, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.